Christmas Eve on the island of Sonal. Bertram was hailing back to the railway, tender first. His regulator had failed after delivering some important shipments to the other railway. He was making good time despite the reverse of tenderness. He was making his way to the crossover lane on the old Minnesota line where he stopped. There, in the old shed, was an old friend, a very old tank engine. His name was Tim and was eager to be rescued. He was excited. Look at that, my dear Bertram. That's Tim. He used to work here. If we could get him out of here, we might just have another engine to help on the Scarlowy line. Wouldn't that be great? Bertram agreed, and soon arrangements were made. Soon, crossed over to the points, Bertram reversed and was coupled up. Tim was excited and looking forward to heading home. Well, what are we waiting for, said Bertram. Let's get going. And soon, both engines made their way. By the time they get to the Scarlowy line, it starts to get dark, cold, and it starts to snow. Ahead was the tunnel, but Bertram didn't know that the tunnel was blocked. Bertram tried to put press on. Even Tim, who researched himself and got him back himself to life, he tried his hardest. But the thicker they got into the snow, the harder it became to push it out. He tried his hardest, but to no avail. He tried using his uh, fire lighter, but to no avail. Then he realized he had no fire lighter, but to no avail. So unfortunately, it was a no avail as well as usual. Bertram was stuck inside the tunnel. He couldn't believe it. He was worried that he might be in the tunnel until spring. He was scared. Further down, the station down the line, Rusty's driver came out of the office and climbed back into his cab. He soon got a message warning from Bertram's driver. Come on, old boy, we must go save Bertram. Rusty was is excited and couldn't believe what was going to happen. Soon, Rusty revved into life and made his way to help his friend. Bertram, in his Shakespearean tone, was mourning for the loss. He thought that the world was going to end, but then he could hear Rusty. climbed into the tunnel and, and rammed into Bertram. Well, this is an unfortunate ending. Rusty joked, and soon he was able to pull Bertram and Tim out of the snowbank. You would have been a frozen icicle, said Rusty. No wonder. Bertram didn't say anything. He was silent. At the station, Sir Tottenham and Mr. Percival were waiting. Hmm. Bertram should have been here by now. This is very odd. I'll wait one more minute, but then... Rusty popped into the station with both Bertram and Tim in tow. At that very same moment, Thomas came by to collect passengers as he had carolers inside the coaches. Oh dear, you three. You certainly had a fine time. <laughs> I think they did, Scarlowy, said Thomas. My goodness, they are cold to the frames. Indeed they are, said Sir Totten Hat. Rusty, you did very well in saving Bertram and Tim. I thought you were lost after the bit sort of closed. It was glad to see you. You'll be a good use. Thank you, Rusty.
said Bertram, who was recovering nicely from being inside the tunnel for always and always and always. Well, don't be trying to be like Henry now, said Rusty. <laughs> you wouldn't hear the end of it. Even Tim had to laugh, and he was fortunate to have been rescued. He was happy to begin a second chance to work on the Scarlowy line. Rusty's crew, Bertrand's driver and fireman, and many others clambered into the coaches for warmth, and soon Thomas made his way with everyone in tow. Victor, Reneas, and Jim couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe that, that Tim was discovered thanks to Bertram. Frank the Arsdale engine was getting repairs at Crowman's Gate with Kevin. He saw the newcomer and was intrigued. My, this could be a good something. Hmm. You can say that again, Frank, said Rusty. You can say that again. And soon, everyone celebrated. Celebrated the return of Tim, the heroics of Rusty, and the heroics of Bertram, the old warrior, for saving their old friend, Tim.